Hey internet, Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication. An acrylic viewing window on a subwoofer box can be an awesome custom touch for a custom car audio build. Having an acrylic viewing window allows us to see into the subwoofer box but still keep the subwoofer box a sealed chamber. But this raises some questions. How do we cut thick acrylic without it chipping? How do we properly seal the subwoofer box around that window so that it doesn't leak any air? What type of acrylic do we use? Also, how do we mount that acrylic to the subwoofer box? Answers to these questions and more is coming up, so let's get started. To start making an acrylic viewing window for my subwoofer box, I need a sheet of acrylic, the side panel of the subwoofer box, and a shape for the cutout. I'm going to start with cutting out the shape of the viewing window on the side of the subwoofer box. Now for this part of the process, you could always use a freehand cut hole using a jigsaw, but because I'm looking for a perfectly smooth shape, I'm using a smart template. I carefully mark its shape onto the side of the box and then use a jigsaw to rough cut that shape. Next, I use double-sided template tape to stick the template to the side of the sub box. Over at the router table, I've loaded in a half-inch flush trim bit. This bit has a bearing that rides on the template and the cutters copy its shape to the wood. This gives us a perfect copy of the shape for the window. Next, we need to do some router work on the back side of this window to account for vinyl material and how the window will make an airtight seal against the wood. I've loaded in a 3 quarter inch rabbiting bit. This bit cuts a step into the wood 3 quarters of an inch in and as deep as I adjust the cut. I want to show you guys the finished project here so you understand completely what I'm doing. That cut that I just made gives me this edge. This edge serves as an edge to allow me to lay down the speaker gasketing tape precisely on the back side of the panel in order to seal the air within the sub box. Next up though, we need to make this cut. This cut is so that I can wrap the vinyl material around the back side of the panel and adhere it so the front is perfect when complete. In order to make that cut, I load in a smaller rabbiting bit and just cut slightly deeper. Here you can really see how I created the two steps. I put a small piece of gasket on there to help visualize the finished product. Now I've actually copied this shape again to a second piece of wood and used a layer chamfer technique to give the front of the panel some added customization. But the focus of this video is adding the acrylic window, so let's get to cutting the acrylic. Now first off, you could absolutely just use a piece of acrylic in rectangle form and bolt it in from the inside of the box. But since I want to show you guys a little bit more, I will be shaping it. For this project, I'm using half inch cast acrylic. For smaller viewing windows like this, half inch is more than strong enough. But for much larger viewing windows, you'd want to step it up to 3 quarter inch thick. Also, take note that I said cast acrylic. Cast is much easier to work with and machine. Now I do want to point out, cutting acrylic on the router is dangerous. To keep things safe, I'm going to first copy my shape to a piece of 3 quarter inch MDF. You will see why in a second. Now since this shape will be my template for shaping the acrylic, I copy it to the acrylic. Now it is time to rough cut. For this, I'll be using a jigsaw with the proper blade for cutting acrylic. Picking the right blade is extremely important. Links to this tool and all the others used in this video is available down in the video description. Now that my acrylic piece is cut roughly to size, I need to stick my wood template to it. Here I'm using beefy 1 inch template tape. We definitely do not want the acrylic to shift during the router cutting process. Next, for safety, I'm sticking my router safety shield to the wood template. This gives me precise control of everything and always keeps my hands a safe distance from the blade. Now if you plan on cutting thick acrylic or aluminum, this is a must-own router bit kit. As you can see, each flush trim bit has a different size bearing. This allows you to step down through the sizes and cut the material in a small amount on each pass. I've loaded in the largest bearing and bit first. When I make a pass, only a few locations around the shape will actually get cut. Next, I step down to the next bearing size and make another pass. I repeat this process several times, and this is time consuming, but it keeps things safe as you're only removing a small amount of material at a time. It also helps save the life of your bits as the cuts are minimal and it gives you a better edge cut quality. For the final pass, I cut the acrylic flush with the edge of the wooden template. 
Now, as a final touch, I like to add a small 45 degree chamfer to the edge to give it more of a finished feel. This gives me my completely shaped piece of acrylic. Again, the shaping is absolutely not required, but if you are working on a complicated subwoofer enclosure, you might have to do this process. Now let's move on to getting the acrylic mounted to the back side of the subwoofer box wall. I start with using a center punch to mark drill locations for my fasteners. Now I'm doing this in just the corners on my project because I'm only making this project in order to make this video to help you guys. If you were actually doing this in a subwoofer box, you would want fasteners every two to three inches. For drilling the holes, we want to use special acrylic drilling bits. Again, the link is down in the video description. To make sure that my holes are perfect, I'm using a drill press, but you could also use a hand drill and a steady hand. After drilling my holes, I'm using a countersink bit. This bit makes an angled cut and allows me to countersink fasteners that sit flush down into the acrylic. Now I need to mount threaded inserts into the wood. These threaded inserts add a metal thread to the wood, that way we can take the window on and off without needing to ruin the threaded holes. Once all of the threaded inserts are added, we can then test bolt the window into position. Now in the meantime, I've wrapped my panel with vinyl. If you were building a subwoofer box, you would now add the window wall to the box in complete assembly and then upholster that subwoofer box. To prepare the box for adding the window in, you would first add gasket tape around the step that we cut earlier. When it gets to the part where it meets up, cut the tape at a long angle. This helps prevent an air leak at that seam. After removing the protective paper from the window, I position it in place and then bolt it in. Now all that we have left to do is peel away the backing paper, which is such a satisfying feeling. Adding an acrylic viewing window like this can really make a subwoofer box much more appealing. When done right, it will look perfect and never leak. If you enjoyed learning this process, I would really appreciate it if you could take a quick second to just smash that like button and take the time to share this video with the car audio community. I also want to say a special thanks to all the guys on my Patreon page. These guys make small donations per video which allowed me to purchase the expensive acrylic and some of the other materials used which made it possible for me to create this video. Thank you again to everyone for watching. I now upload new videos every Monday focused on custom car audio, so be sure to subscribe to be updated when I upload new videos. A special thanks goes out to Brian, Emmanuel, Ali, EJ, Rory, Eddie, Truman, and Jerry along with the rest of the Patreon support team. Thank you for your continued support.